Welcome back to Church Chats. So glad to be back because we're going to have some fun with Thomas Williams here. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, I guess so. Now I'm starting to be worried. So one of our most viral videos on the church's YouTube page and the church's Facebook page um, is a performance, not a performance, I'm sorry. Be careful, be careful. Again, it's not about Thomas. It's not about you. Um, But there was a piece that you you played Mm -hmm. with handbells. Yep. And we've given you the name around the church as the Handbell Ninja. Right. Handbell Ninja. Handbell Ninja. I said handbell. I'm hanging hanging out with you. Arkansas. Arkansas. Some handbells. Some handbells. handbells. Um, But (laughs) this is a handbell video. And what's exciting about this is that Peggy is is accompanying you on the piano. Mm -hmm. Peggy Peggy Graff, our organist and uh, associate. Associate director, director, yeah. Um, She's accompanying you on the piano, but you have all the handbells laid out and play the entire I do. song yourself. So uh, we're going to go to that video right now and take a look and let's, uh, let's talk about it. Stand up, stand up, Jesus. I'm standing. You are. I'm impressed by how you you sustain some of those notes and you don't drop it all back down. Like you hold, like you switch hands. It's all a circus trick. It's a circus trick? Yeah. It's like juggling. Yeah, pretty much. So what you don't see is I never wear shoes when I do this. Really? Why is that? I just, I've never felt like shoes, the shoes mess up my graceful movement, so I always take my shoes off right before I play. So we got a little bit of a tempo change here. Yeah. Gosh, that's fast. Oh, and you're swinging some of those notes too, right? Yeah. Really screwed up there. I did. <laughs> I, I got off. I got off a little bit, which it happens so easily. You grab the wrong bell, and then you just have a panic. Keychain. Another keychain. So, you, so you're rearranging. Rearranging, uh, playing kind of in the keys, so it's a little bit easier for me. The oh, grand, nice and slow. The big That's grand cool. end ending, yeah. I'm oh, just yep. there, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm not going to criticize you. I don't like easy. Yeah, I, it, I can't do this. I played this piece many times and never messed up, but you know, when you get up there doing it, it's the adrenaline's going. Mm-hmm. And also, I will say that there's three different types of handbells brands, and this is the set brand that we own that I don't normally play on. Okay. So the difference is the handle colors. So I generally oh. let the white, like a piano key, and a blacks, like the accidentals, help me kind of visually see where the things are and not have to look at the notes. Oh, look at that, you picked up all four. All yeah. four, yeah, I did the old uh, showstopper at the end, yeah. That's awesome. And how many people watched that? Uh, I believe on f- on Facebook it was it went, it was more than on... Um, than YouTube. Than YouTube. YouTube was like six or 700, I think, which yeah. is... It's a lot, yeah. Yeah, but fa- Facebook was in the thousands. thousands. Yeah. Well, that's because people share a lot of YouTube, right. a lot of YouTube videos, yeah. No, I, I started ringing solo. Uh, it's, I always joke around. I say I ring solo handbells because I didn't have any friends. Because um, I was like, I, I started ringing handbells in third grade, and then I went to a summer camp and I saw a guy ringing solo, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Um, my mom, uh, I think I was fifteen or sixteen, uh, drove me an hour to have a less few lessons with this guy. Oh, nice. Uh, and once you learn the basic techniques, it's just practice. Yeah. Uh, because obviously you can only do so much with your hands down uh, and knowing how to you know move bells back and forth and how many to do at each hand. Uh, it's just a lot of practice and it just takes time. Mm. Uh, and it, you get to the point that each bells are kind of a part of you. So 
obviously saw me going faster, uh, and you don't have time to think about the notes. You just right. have to you like just, you've, you've memorized you memorize the, the, the mechanics. The mechanics, and, the and I memorize, like I said, about the bell colors changes, and then I would memorize the steps. How many four that way, and then three this way, and then it was almost like a mathematical kind mm -hmm. of idea when I looked at it. Obviously, it's a hymn, so I know the melody too. Sure. But I'm not. I didn't have a theory teacher in, in high school like a lot of people do nowadays. So you know, for me to to know, oh, in my head, oh, this is going to be a D or an A, and because because I, I can sing it in my head. Mm -hmm. I don't have that good of musical skills when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but I know the song, and so I was just able to practice, practice, yeah. practice, and then help, hopefully have enough. Uh, courage to do it and the first time I rang that piece I was I think I was 16 I rang it in front of a music club there in Arkansas it was awful <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh it was so awful like because I I got so nervous yeah well, sure I, yeah. I practiced it perfectly fine but then I was like practicing it uh, and uh, I went to play it in front of people I got so nervous it's just like when I play anything in the church like about to play piano or, or, or organ uh, I've gotten better with piano, but when I have to play organ, I have to practice for weeks uh, to just to play a, a basic hymn. Like Peggy can just walk up there right now and do right, it. Yeah. Uh, but I get so nervous, I get into my head about it. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's what it is. And so, that was for, for years, um, I remember at a previous church that we were both working at at the time. He would he would always um, practice the contemporary songs because that's not not his thing yeah. all the time. And I'd always walk in like midweek and kind of hear him play something, and um, and I'd always go, "You ever played this song before? <laughs> because if, if you ever messed up, <laughs> you ever play that song? Yeah. No, yeah, first time playing this one. Yeah, huh? first time playing. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, that was the the, the joke. But I yeah. I get it though because I mean it's it's the same thing with if it's just you, then it's and you and your mind starts racing and oh, goes yeah. somewhere else. You go, oh. Uh, it, it's just me. Whereas, like with the full band, I can I break a string or I forget oh, yeah. whatever. You got somebody that, they else can that keep can going, sing, keep, keep going. going. Yeah. It's, so just think about. Well, remember when I was at Cleburne and you were at Cleburne, mm -hmm. and I uh, started uh, singing hymns at the eight thirty service. Yes. They didn't have an eight thirty service person. Oh, God. Yeah. And so I, I wasn't there very long. Another church no. snatched me up. But then it's like, oh, but we still want someone to lead hymns at that service. So who has to do it? Clint does. Who do doesn't it. know very many hymns? Clint, Clint does it. But you know what? You know what? <laughs> I learned so many hymns I for was, that year was, or two yeah. singing hymns at that 830 service. Because they, you had to lead it. And yeah, oh. you, I remember you like cursing my name of like, you started this and you left. <laughs> like, and then I have to do it. And I don't know these hymns, so you had to like practice. Yeah, I remember that's so. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you bought my lunch a couple times because of that. Probably, probably. I'm so mad. I'm oh, so I, you mad. were very mad about it, but yeah, it's you. You have learned and grown and sure a better person for it. Of, yeah, and and you helped me get there. Thank I. You. you know what? You're welcome. Yeah. You're you're welcome. Uh, so uh, speaking of uh, maybe things people don't know that that you can do, uh, like with the handbells and 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 things like that, and obviously in worship, it's not about not about you. That that is about now. Th there's dedication. You want to be um, you want to be good at what uh, the song like. You want good yeah. musicianship and, and all of that. So you, that's why we practice. That's, that's that's all scriptural. That's what even the Old Testament it says that the uh, those who led music were skilled uh, musicians or craftsmen in mm -hmm. their their field. And so it wasn't just anybody leading worship in the uh, the temple during the Old Testament. So we kind of take that now as like okay, you should be Proficient, more or more than proficient, you should practice what you do, and right. not just, you know. Sometimes uh, in some churches, it's like, well, just they have a song in their heart, they should be allowed to sing. Which I agree, they they should be allowed sure. to sing, but they might not should be allowed to sing solo. Right. So right. they should be able to be a part of the the body and sing. And you know, even some people aren't really called to be in the choir. Uh, it's my job. Uh, it's your job to kind of help foster people who are interested mm -hmm. in it. But you know, some people just don't have that spiritual gift. Sure. And so yeah. we have to also discern that sometimes too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, speaking of, uh, so that in worship, it's not about you. Not about and, me. And, 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 and we get that. There is something that is about you that I want to bring to light, uh, a secret life. Uh, if, if bum, I, bum, bum, I know, a secret if, life. If uh, within the first month or two of meeting you uh, years, years ago, mm -hmm. uh, 
I think uh, we, we went out and I learned something about you and it's that you have an alter ego. I do. His name is Ramon Quintez. It is. It is. It's my karaoke ego. It is your karaoke ego. Nothing shady. Just a karaoke life. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's karaoke and being a trained musician is a very, you know, slippery slope. A lot of mu musical people do not like karaoke. I hate karaoke. Say so you hate karaoke. Hate a lot of, you know, a lot of the uh, other music staff here on on at church do not like karaoke. I'm watching. I I'm not going to get up. Right. I'm not going to get up. Right. No, I I, I get that. You, you know, you don't like doing it. I think we've maybe made you do it like once. Yeah. Uh, so. In the 10, 10 plus years I've known you. Uh, but when I was in Arkansas, um, I used to be the same way. I used to, when I was in college, I thought, Karaoke is for people who can't sing good, mm -hmm. or you know, people who uh, you know wish they were performers but they couldn't make it because they weren't again not good enough. Um, but I one summer in undergrad took a musical theater class, and uh, I had to learn some songs that were not classical or in um, in a foreign language. So one night we were at a, a bar restaurant. I was in college, and that's when they used to have those books. So mm -hmm. yeah. if, if you're karaoke people, you know back in the day they would have these huge printed books with colored or film uh, sleeves because of course it's at a bar, so it's nasty. Uh, and so it's like <laughs> this thick of like all these by song or by artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm a big Elvis fan first of all, I've been to Graceland twice. Uh, and then so I thought well let me just let me just see what that, uh, let me just see what that, if they have any Elvis in there and see if I know it because mm -hmm. I know lots of Elvis and so I, let me see whether I know any Elvis in this. And so I was, oh, they do have Elvis, and I, you know, Love Me Tender, and Jailhouse Rock, and Hound Dog, and oh yeah, I know those. And then I thought, that's my favorite. Of, uh, w when oh, Ramon gets up there and starts his oh, yeah. singing of, yeah, you know, my yeah, that's right. It's yeah, I, I, I get into it. And then <laughs> I thought, well, let me look at the theater, like in the musical theater section. And they had a, a section in that book, and I looked. Oh, I know that song. No, I know that song. And it's like, oh, oh well, it's out. And my friend who was more interested in doing it. And she was like, well, I'm going to sing something. I'm like, you are? I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. And then as the, as the evening progressed and uh, things got a bit more um, lax in my uh, judgment. You got some courage. Sure, I got some courage. Yeah. And so I had that courage. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to sing Elvis. And I'm pretty sure Elvis was the first thing I sang. And I sang, I think I sang maybe Hound Dog it was. And uh, I remember there was like a staircase uh, in the in the restaurant, and it's like I'm gonna go on the staircase, and I was like, I, you know, because I felt like I was gonna be a performer at the moment, and so I became Ramon, and I became Ramon because I didn't want anybody to know my name first of all. Sure, of course. And not. Ramon was a kid I went to school with in high school, and he was the kid that sat at lunch with us, uh, and so it was a different name, um, and so his name was Ramon Quintez. And I just said, that's going to be my name. I just go by Ramon most of the time. But I mean, I, it's I'm sorry, difficult. Ramon, if you're I, out there. <laughs> he's not. They don't know. They, they're, they're looking for him now, actually. They, oh. they don't know oh. where he is. <laughs> he just goes missing sometimes. But um, but yeah, so I, I sang and I kind of just I enjoyed it. And I kind of had that 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 bug hit me mm -hmm. of, of performing. And so now I used karaoke as a time to, to kind of let myself perform um, because, again, church is not obviously about performance, it's about giving glory to God. And so uh, I don't sing that much anymore, to be honest. Yeah. I think the last time I sang was maybe six months ago, uh, which I used to sing three w times a week when I was in Arkansas. And we've got a picture of, uh, I actually do have a video that I'm not going to show. Thank you. Oh gosh, thank you. But here's, here's, a, here's a picture of, uh, of Thomas in the, in the middle of that karaoke performance. I believe this was Hound Dog. And what's, what's exciting uh, watching this is watching the crowd go from the person who the person who went right before you who they're like oh, oh gosh yeah you know, we're listening to creep again like, <laughs> yeah like it's just the same old songs to somebody who does Elvis yeah and you work the or room, work the room yeah and it's so funny so what I'll say to you all is that on Sunday mornings you may see Thomas here at, at worship at the you, 11 o'clock service you will see me well I'm you not. will <laughs> you will but if you go out on Friday or Saturday night and find your local karaoke area, either in Parker County or Tarrant County, uh, you may you get may. to meet Ramon Quintez. You may. So it was a joy and a pleasure, my friend, Thank having you. you on this first Church Chats podcast. Thank you. Let's do it again, you know, maybe in season two or three. Absolutely. You know, we can, yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. So thanks again for joining us at Church Chats. 
Look forward to the next episode with our next guest, Matt Britt. He's the youth minister here at First United Methodist Church of Fort Worth. We will see you next time.